Hello, good day, and welcome back to Go on the Run. And today I will be talking about program structure as a pattern. And the reason I include program structure in this section about Go patterns is because as you develop more and more complex programs, you're going to be looking at ways in which you can structure your program and you know the folder and so on in which you you know store your code. And instead of trying to guess or um, figure that out on your own, well, if you look at what other people have done who've been writing Go program for a few years, um, maybe you can get um, some ideas and this problem has already been solved for you. If you search for design pattern in your favorite search engine, you're more likely going to see this book, Design Pattern by the Gang of Four. I'm not going to talk too much about that. Um, if you're sort of doing more object-oriented programming language, you should probably check it out. Um, if you're more in a functional space and Go is not quite an object-oriented language, uh, I'm not going to tell you you could read it. It's a pretty dense book. I've read it, but um, that was back in the day when I was mostly doing C++. Um, so let's see. Design um, creation pattern, that's a specific pattern. So I'm looking for something that talks about design pattern in general. Okay, so here we go. In software engineering, a design pattern is a general, repeatable solution to a commonly occurring problem in software design. A design pattern isn't a finished design that can be transformed directly into code. It's a description or template for how to solve a problem that can be used in many different situations. Now, that's definitely true. The entire thing here is true. But that first part is really, really, is really the crux of what we want to focus on. In software engineering, a design pattern is a general repeatable solution to a commonly occurring problem. It doesn't mean it's the only one. It doesn't mean it's the best one. It just means it's a general solution for that type of common, um, commonly occurring problem. And so what I mentioned here with writing large Go programs is the problem there is as you write more complex and larger Go applications, you'll need to figure out a way to structure your code. And so that's the problem. And so over time, what kind of pattern or solution people have come up with that to structure their Go code? And that is why I consider program structure or knowing a program structure or looking at the program structure for large Go program a pattern. And I include it here as a Go language pattern. All right. Now, as you will see, as I go through and I describe some of the problem, just to illustrate the issues that you can run into and what we're going to try to solve, um, I had to break this up. Um, I think that how if I try to cover the issue, the problem, and then show you the solution, it's going to be a much longer video. So let's say you want to work on an application. And we'll start with very simple. So we have this one application we're going to work on. By application, I mean a Go binary. This is the resulting thing that's going to run the executable. And as we know, Go is a statically linked language. All this other stuff don't have any dependencies once you compile the application, right? Not time, but at compile time or anything like they're pulling in um, any other package. So you are going to run your application. And so this is application one that you have. And your application, of course, will be made up of one or more features, right? That you th That's what the application is, provides a feature or something, and it has to do something. And so how you compose those features, though, or you implement those features, you might further break down your um, features into a set of modules. And those modules might be used by different features. So feature one might use module A and B. And I'm calling it module here, but it doesn't have to be module. It could be subsystem. You can, whatever name you want to use for breaking down the code. When I say module, I'm not talking about Go module right now. I'm being very high level and fairly abstract and nothing specific to Go at this time, even though we're going to talk about a Go pattern in the solution and modules, Go modules are going to play a role in the solution. But right now, I'm not talking about module. I'm simply saying breaking up application. And some people, the way I see it is that an application is the big thing. And generally, an application provide one or more features, and that's like the next larger thing you can look at. And then for each feature, you might break it up into subsystem or modules, and those modules can be re used across features or something like that. And so feature two, for example, might use modules C and D. Now, we can keep drawing a line and say that feature C probably used a module, or maybe not. doesn't really matter. I think you get the general idea. Okay. So what if you write in multiple applications? 
And you might find that how oh, some of the feature in one application might show up in another application. I don't want to try and justify why two applications might present the same feature, but maybe they do. Like maybe let's say an application might be saving to a database and that's a feature. And so the ability to save to some type of persistent store or database or whatever might be something you want to pull into another application wholesale and say, okay, this application now also have the ability to save or save data or persist data to the same type of store, right? So whatever it is, right? Um, or maybe the feature is being able to access a certain type of um, file or whatever for file enough for certain format. So that might be a feature you might add to the second application. So as you could see in application two, while it might share some of the features with application one, um, it has its own feature, of course, to make it that makes it a separate application. And of course, application feature one still needs to use A and B because it's the exact same feature. Um, but feature three might use some of the code from module C and then maybe um, some code from module E. And so we can see it all again. This is just a breaking up of the code into four pieces that makes it reusable. And the fact that we were, had our code broken up, like into these modular subsystem, I'm using modular and subsystem interchangeably in this video only. And you could see that how that allows us to use module C, both in application one and two. Now, of course, we reuse module A and B, but that what came in as a result of using feature one. All right, so now you can start seeing that as you develop multiple applications, whether you're the only person or you're on a team that's responsible to develop application, and sometimes it's not clear that you need to develop multiple applications. As the project evolves, you might find that more applications come now, or maybe up front you might know. And so you, it is a good idea to try and make things that can be reusable as you develop the application. Start asking yourself, can this piece be reused by anyone else, or can I reuse it? And if that's the case, then maybe you want to factor it out, especially if it seems like it's a really important type of thing. Like, for example, if you're going to write a piece of code that does encryption, you probably want to wrap that up as a separate thing that you can test in isolation. And even if you don't think somebody has to reuse it, it's just because the kind of feature seems like something that maybe later on other people might use or might be rewritten to do some other type of encryption. So it makes sense to abstract it out as some sort of module subsystem or um, so a set of APIs that, you, or you know, you can call like an interface. Okay. So now that you have your multiple application, and this is the same picture as before, I just think it's probably easier to see here with the lines, right? Uh, so app one, same thing, uses the same set of features. The features use the same set of modules. I didn't cheat and change anything here, other than how I drew the lines. It's sort of easier for the next diagram that I'm going to show. And so, like I said. Um, Oftentimes, when you're working on a project, um, really, um, you know, that project may include one or more application. So let's call this project one with its set of application one and two. And maybe there might be a second project, either on your team or another team, it sort of really doesn't matter. And that other project includes, you know, its set of application. Again, I showed two, but it could be any number of applications. And in that other project, maybe app one need to use feature three. Again, because feature three is some sort of thing that we want to be able to pull into that other team or app project in that app needs. Okay. And so that's good. We might be able to pull that in, but we also might want to say that, oh, you know what? This feature X in project one, I never want it to be able to be used external um, from, from outside of this project right? Or maybe outside of this application. So even within project one, we might say feature is just such a critical piece of thing that no app two, even though it's part of the same project, shouldn't be able to use it. Or maybe it's such a critical piece of thing that nothing outside of project one should be able to access it. Um, but feature one and two should be accessible, right? Or be reusable. And so how, these are sort of problems that you can run into. And the question is, how do you structure this? This is, this is a real problem. If you haven't encountered this in your project yet, well, good, but at least now after we cover this, you're gonna have the tools so and the information you need such that if you have to start writing projects like these or developing a larger scale application, you're gonna know how to deal with it. Now, this is the end of this video, but that other video with the source code 
uh, once we jump into it, it's going to be, you know, we're going to develop it slowly because you're going to see we have a lot of things here just to show. And I'm going to write the code in essentially the same way I've presented the problem, where I'm going to start very simple and I start build up from there and show you the issue and how we resolve them. Okay. So with that said, if you want to continue and do some reading um, in terms of what we discussed here, um, and I'll make those resources available in the once we start covering the code. If you go to your favorite search engine, I type in Golang project structure, you see a number of links come up. And um, one of the first places you might want to start reading is here on golangprojectstructure.com. But I think um, the um, this GitHub project here. Um, is where you're gonna sort of land eventually in terms of, I wanna create an application and um, you'll see the inspiration for what I'm gonna be talking about. I did not come up with this program structure that we're gonna cover by itself. It's because I too wanted to ask, um, wanted to solve the problem of how do I structure my Go application? There are a number of YouTube videos out there that have um, addressed this issue um, and presented at GopherCon a few years ago. Um, but essentially the major inspiration came from this project. And so, and then of course, reading the Go um, build tool, like Go mod um, documentation and so on. But we'll cover um, some that when we look over the code, but I just want to give you a heads up. So I'll put these link to essentially this project and the other one in the reference below in the description. And of course, when we start covering the code. Now, if you can, Please do me a favor, I wait to the end of the video here. If you're watching this and you got to the end, I hope you like what I just presented and what I intend to show about Go program structure. And hope you think that, oh, oh, that was a good thing that, um, you know, we're gonna be covering this. And so if you're watching this and you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Please hit the subscription button. If you are subscribed or if you're gonna subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know when I post videos. And definitely leave a comment and tell me what you think about pro Go program structure. Like, um, have you had this problem where you have to try and figure out how to structure your Go program? Are you planning to work on a large project soon? And this information is going to be helpful to, to you. Just let me know what, what your thoughts are around this whole, um, you know, Go program structure and as a pattern also. All right, take care. See you in the next video. Here are some ways in which you can contribute if you are able to, and stay safe. Have a great day. Bye.